Uh, next item on the agenda is public comment, and actually I don't see anybody that would qualify as public, so I guess there is none. The next item on the... I don't see qualified or unqualified. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, the approval of the minutes of December 5th. I'll move approval. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The next one is the election of the new chair and the vice chair for 2019. And I would like to take this item on. And I am, I am happy to nominate Dave Hudson as the chair so that I can give him as much respect and honor as uh, he oh, gave three. me. Uh, oh. Uh -huh. Oh, and as vice, oh, he's like you, <laughs> <laughs> and as vice chair, I nominate. Um, oh, oh gosh, Janet Abelson. I I knew it twenty seconds ago. Janet Abelson. I'll uh, may have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I now turn the meeting oh, over yeah. to. Okay, consent calendar is generally routine in nature. Anybody want to pull an item? Seeing Se second motion, Romic second, Luella. What's, what's her oh, name? No, no, I did that already. Uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. Okay, we're on the call to projects. That's 5 0. Uh, Hisham, are you? Oh, Martin's up. We have 4 .0. Yeah, 4.0 is a call for project for Plan Bay Area BBA. Oh, I did? Okay. Uh, I thought I said Hisham, but it's not Hisham. He just started working this way. It's Martin. Actually, it is his job. Okay, so Martin tells us that it's his. Sean, <laughs> Amy, you got three seconds. Go ahead, tell us all about it. it sounds good. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, yesterday, MTC issued the call for projects for the new RTP. Uh, it's going to be called Plan Bay Area 2050, PBA 2050. We're asking you today to authorize the issuance uh, of the letter to the RTPCs included in attachment B in your packet uh, following this meeting so we can have enough time to respond to MTC. The new RTP will cover a 30-year period uh, or six more years than the last RTP. This is actually good news since it means we will have larger capacity this round uh, which will allow us to fit in more of our priority projects in this RTP. Being in the RTP is basically like getting your license uh, to go hunting for funding. It does not guarantee that the project will be funded, uh, but it will allow you to compete for future and state federal money. A project that will increase the capacity of the transportation system and impact air quality this is what MTC calls regionally significant projects, uh, such as adding lanes to freeways uh, or rail extensions. Uh, they must be individually listed in the RTP. To make things easier on the sponsors, MTC uh, in the last RTP and in this new one as well, will create programmatic categories uh, to cover projects such as pit bike improvements, minor widenings of roadways, intersection improvements, and so on, where we don't have to list each and every project. If a sponsor has a project that fits in one of these criteria, that means they are technically in the RTP. Uh, every four years during the RTP update process, MTC works with the CMAs like CCTA as well as the project sponsors to update the project list. Uh, this list must be constrained to the amount of discretionary funding projected to be available during the RTP period, which MTC will not release until the fall of this year. So we don't know that exact number at this time. Uh, what MTC does, they uh, provide each CMA with a large number, much larger than or maybe 50% or more uh, larger than the target that we will get, which allows them to pick and choose between the projects that we submit based on how well they perform in the RTP. Uh, to ensure that MTC knows what Contra Costa and CCTA priority projects are, we are proposing to use the same approach that we used in the last RTP, 
where we submit two lists to MTC. The first list uh, is what we call the financially constrained list. It's basically constrained to a funding target that is close to what we think we will get uh, for this RTP. In this case, we're, we'll be assuming that we will get about $3 billion, which is a third more than what we issued, uh, that, than what we used in the last uh, call for projects for the prior RTP. The second list is what we call the vision list, and it's basically a backup list of projects uh, that MTC can pull projects from if the fund estimate they provide us in the fall of 2019 ends up to be higher than what we're currently assuming. Uh, we, are, uh, we are proposing that the vision list, the total uh, funding for the vision list do not, does not exceed $5 billion just to keep it manageable. So with that, uh, this approach has worked well with us in, in the past uh, because it really provided us, CCTA staff, a clear direction on which projects we should be fighting for in the next couple years uh, should MTC decides not to include one or more of our priority projects in the RTP. Uh, in terms of the schedule, we will be working with the RTPCs and the project sponsors uh, to update the project list in the next, two, in the next uh, couple months. We will uh, come back to you with uh, an updated list for your approval in June, and that will allow us to meet MTC's deadline of June 30th of 2019 to submit our lists to them. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, I would say any questions. First, are you looking for us to champion one of these tonight, or you're just uh, releasing for projects and RTPCs? Okay. Yes. Uh, any questions, comments? Seems pretty straightforward. A motion to release the? Move yeah. approval. Second. you got to be. Well, wait a minute. I didn't hear anything over there. Former chair, my favorite, Loella, did you want to make a motion? <laughs> Okay. Okay. We had a motion. Romick, second. Abelson, third. From Haskew. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Please take these homes. I did have one comment or question. I didn't see on there. I saw a cyber train in Richmond. I hope we're. I hear that the ferry is doing pretty well, and I see on here we have something about Martinez. Is, are we talking about putting bucks in there for the ferry for Richmond? Or I didn't see it on there quickly. But is that part of the project, or is that already done? Okay. Okay. I saw it. It said to San Francisco or and San Francisco, but to I mean, there's we. If Richmond worked it, okay. You got the picture. You got the motion. You got the second. You got the votes. Five zero. We're on to. Uh, Thank now. you very much. A, Go ahead. Got to turn it on. Um, I believe this is the item where the there's a chart with uh, yeah it is yeah um, the vision list for example of projects and so forth the font size makes it just really unreadable and I know this is just that's what these no are. it's an issue uh, I'm sorry yeah but that's what these are right here right yeah. oh I didn't see that yeah. so sorry, what uh, what will go out to the public and what will they use. On. All right, we'll take Kevin for a while. We'll come back. Go ahead, Kevin. She's working on phone. I got it off. Oh, I, got it? Okay. I thought I had already done that, actually. Um, the, um, do you want me to just finish? Yes, An anyway, I just have a request that the it, something be done so the font size is more readable for whatever is distributed in the 8.5 by 11 format. And what you've given us here is just a template. Mm -hmm. This isn't yeah. a finished product or anything like that. We're all going to take it back to the RTPCs, and that's where the decisions will come back and we'll form or formulate, either add more takeoff and move things around and whatnot. So this is this is just a call. This is just for us to say, hey, we're doing this, um, and move forward. So I just want to. Cool. Sounds good. I need a mic. 
outcome from five planning director seminars. So we're going to get all educated about SB 743. You got that one, Martin? Yeah, this one's drawn some interest. This is... So good evening, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations on your new chairmanship. I and, start practicing uh, for my favorite part, meeting <laughs> adjourned. <laughs> my name is Martin Engelman. I'm Deputy Executive Director for Planning at CCTA. And uh, uh, tonight I'm going to give you a presentation on a series of planning seminars that were held over the past year. Um, as we looked and adopted the 2017 <laughs> countywide transportation plan, we were looking forward at a future that's quite uncertain because of new technologies, uh, new – this is not the latest presentation, by the way. V2? <coughs> V2 rocket. Because uh, of new technologies and um, – let's see if it – that works better. Um, uh, changes in legislative session, SB 743, um, and uh, changes in the way we plan. I guess it is. Okay. So the, the plan said as an implementation measure, we should go out and we should meet with all the planning directors and all the transportation managers uh, in Contra Costa and, um, and talk about the future. So we set up these uh, five seminars, and they started back in April. We held one in April 2018, June, September, December, February. Uh, this last one was Valentine's Day 2019. And um, the idea was to take a look at, at the new legislation, SB 743, the so-called three revolutions of electrification, ride-sharing, and automation. Uh, changes in land use, uh, new considerations about equity, and um, and also kind of breakthroughs in uh, multimodal mobility, and have expert speakers come in and share with us uh, what they've learned. Some of these folks have written books uh, about it, and then. All of the planning directors would uh, get together after that and have small group out, small group breakout sessions to talk about uh, what they learned. And all this would eventually feed into the way we plan for the future. As Randy always says, good planning makes for good future projects. So our future CTP update, our future congestion management program update, and our growth management program probably all need to be updated when we think about what's going on in the future. The first seminar was called Future in Transportation, and the keynote speaker was Professor Daniel Sperling from UC Davis Institute of Transportation Studies. And Daniel has written a book called The Three Revolutions, which address um, autonomous vehicles, uh, ride sharing, ride hailing, and um, electric vehicles. And uh, after his speech, we had small group discussions um, to talk about how new technologies would change things and, you know, they're going to change the way we handle parking. Um, they're going to have an impact on transit, on, on sh sharing vehicles. Big thing is a curbside management. What do you do with everybody pulling over, stopping, and letting somebody off and picking somebody up? So that was the first uh, seminar. The second seminar held on June 7th. Last, uh, that's still spring, I guess. And for the second seminar, we had the keynote speaker Chris Ganson, who is actually the implementer of SB 743 over at the Governor's Office of Planning and Research. And he's been working on all the guidance uh, that will affect how we do environmental impact reports uh, with, under SB 747, uh, SB 743, beginning July 1st, 2020. And um, uh, he's a strong believer in vehicle miles traveled over LOS as it improves livability and reduces congestion and reduces pavement maintenance cost, improves public health. Um, and following his discussion, um, we talked about VMT a lot and um, uh, still went back to cover what, 
what we talked about with Dan Sperling, but then also looked at how BMT would affect the way the way we measure our goals. What what are our so-called metrics for improving um, transportation, and how does that affect um, housing? Does it affect the urban limit line? Um, and then it's particularly for for infills and priority development areas. Um, that's one of the key reasons why SB 743 came to be, is so that we could put housing in the um, in the transit oriented or, oriented areas without having to worry about their their impacts on level of service. So these first two seminars kind of tell us the world is changing, technology is changing, legislative se session is changing, le legislative setting is changing, and so the third one was called setting our goals and. Um, the, the question here was what are the right goals given these changes in, uh, in technology and legislation. So the keynote speaker here was James Corliss and he is the CEO of Sacramento Area Council of Governments. He was formerly with MTC and uh, for a long while he was over on the East Coast working uh, for a, um, a think tank back there. Yeah. So. Um, his um, his work in Sacramento is really, they spent a lot of time set, looking at what goals are the right goals, and he, he kind of broke it into three kinds of measures. You have real world measures of, you know, what you're consuming, what you're using, plan level measures where you're talking about a plan and what its impacts are on certain metrics, and then project level metrics or measures where you have a specific project, you want to know the impacts, so you just think up a bunch of measures for that. Um, and he also had some great creative use of dashboards, and dashboards are something we're trying to get to quickly as people have less and less time to read big reports and they just want to know what the heck's going on, where's the dial landing, is it good or bad or, or really good, and so uh, he had some really, really inventive uh, presentation material for that that he's actually applying in Sacramento. Um, small group discussions here went yeah, took a deep dive into the, the metrics and how they should be changed and updated. As you know, for our action plans and for our countywide plan, now we have a lot of uh, level of service in there and a lot of congestion-based metrics. And so talking about how do we transition that to uh, vehicle miles traveled, and all of this, of course, is to reduce greenhouse gases so it affects climate change, uh, and all these other topics were discussed as well. Um, and for each of these discussions, in your packet is the outcome of those discussions. I'm not going to go through it all, but if you want to read what, what the small group discussions output, that's in, in the attachment to your packet. Seminar four, uh, we um, focused on the measure CJ Growth Management Program. This was last December. The keynote speaker was Robert Liberty, director of the Institute for Sustainable Solutions at Portland State University. And uh, he has family in the area, so he's happy to fly down here <laughs> and uh, speak to us. And he's done ULL studies not only in the United States but around the world and looked at the impacts of, of what ULLs can and can't do. And he had a lot of interesting uh, aerial photos to show the impacts of that. We talked about cooperative planning, um, our growth management program, how it works, and how could we improve the process. And we also want to rethink the way we invest in transportation given uh, changes in the growth management program. Uh, the small group discussions here um, talked about um, how we can improve the process. There, there's a lot of concern about the checklist that we currently use and having to fill it out and take it to your council and sign it with a wedding signature and submit it, review it by the CAC and so forth. How can we improve that process? Um, how does it affect the way we invest in the, in the future? Um, the cooperative planning uh, uh, element of our program came up because if um, if congestion and level of service is no longer an impact, what is the upstream jurisdiction telling the downstream jurisdiction? Well, I'm going to increase your traffic, but I'll decrease your vehicle miles traveled. So it makes for an interesting discussion in the cooperative planning realm and affects our growth management program. Seminar five was, as I said, Valentine's Day 2019. What better way to spend your holiday than at a planning director seminar? 
directors for the future. And here we had Ellen Greenberg, who is the deputy director for sustainability at Caltrans. She reports directly to the Caltrans director at headquarters. Um, come and um, uh, we briefed her on what we had done in the past four sessions, and then she looked um, out at at the future. And she's very knowledgeable about our growth management program because she actually wrote it back in the uh, late 80s and early 90s. She took Measure C and, and developed the first set of technical procedures and implementation documents as a consultant. And she worked, until recently, she worked for uh, a major consulting firm uh, on international projects. But she's finally come back to Caltrans. She never was there before, but she came to Caltrans and now she's uh, uh, working on sustainability. So. Um, uh, we looked at past planning approaches. We looked at what's happened, you know, events that have happened since 1990. So much has happened. And we had a nice little timeline of all the, all the things that have happened, you know, from the cell phone to Lyft to Uber, uh, the legislative changes. Uh, and, and also um, she brought in a lot of things that we don't have in our growth management program and, and we're, we're not really – even on our radar screen, they might have they might have been subtly, but you know, well, new technology for one, that's an obvious one. But environmental sustainability uh, has really come up, especially the way we manage stormwater on new projects, and of course, um, climate change. Equity uh, was not a big issue back when we started this program, and and now health, of course, obesity, health, uh, active transportation, economic. Uh, vitality, resiliency, and the housing shortage, all of this came up in her talk, and so we uh, thought about how we might incorporate that into the way we plan. So the discussion groups here, uh, we did a cute thing. We had a, uh, a, a talk show conversation where uh, three audience members got up and talked about what they thought was going on in the future with land use and transportation, and then the small group discussions to talk about the themes we got from the seminar series and how they could be used as tools to update the CCTA's long-range planning documents. And um, topics of discussion included how can we broaden our multimodal transportation service objectives to, to include some of these things that we're talking about. So, so now maybe the objectives aren't just about routes or trails or BART, BART lines, but maybe they're more general. And so it kind of gets us back to performance measures. We originally used to have performance measures in Measure C. We had performance measures for police, fire, uh, parks, sanitary, uh, stormwater, and uh, uh, sanitary. I already said that. Um, and so, so we're kind of making it full circle here and going back to including some of those measures possibly in our growth management program. So um, just to summarize what we did, we had five seminars, as I just said, and then out of that came, came four themes. Um, first and foremost, of course, is innovation in transportation and innovation in our, in our programs and how can we incorporate all of that. Um, translating our program from congestion level service to VMT obviously is a big one. Broadening our MTSOs to embrace equity and health and so forth. Uh, and then a uh, big question, how do we implement change? How do we change this thing? It was approved by the voters of Contra Costa. And do we want to look at, at making uh, major changes to it? Uh, so the conclusions for, for Contra Costa, general feeling about the five um, uh, seminars, is we're on the right track. We're not, we're not way out of line. We're still uh, at the cutting edge of, of uh, growth management. And, uh, and we can use everything we have and build upon it. We don't necessarily have to tear a lot of things down. Uh, but modifications are necessary in the short term to, to uh, you know, embrace or react to what's happened um, outside of our world here. And, and in the long term to really change the way we plan for the future. Um, so, uh, and of course a big question here is how we do, how we forecast the future. It's hard to forecast uh, uh, future stormwater runoff. It's hard to forecast future equity. It's hard to forecast health. And so we're talking about broader, more challenging forecasts than just how much traffic is out there in 2050. And now we are out to 2050. So immediate steps, uh, we think we do have to transition to vehicle miles traveled. That's something that's going to happen. We want to improve our dashboards so that you can see 
uh, quickly what's going on, uh, for example, what's going on in your priority development area, how many houses have been built and are they affordable. Um, we need to improve our growth management program process and uh, Matt handles the checklists now. Uh, there are probably many ways we can streamline it, have a, have a web-based submittal process. Um, uh, we definitely got signals that it's, it's too time consuming and uh, a lot of work to do a, a growth management compliance checklist at this point. And then infield development assistance. Um, the PDAs are out there, but how, how does a local planner explain PDAs to, to, to the council? And how does a local planner explain to the public that PA, PDAs are good, you want them? There's something good you should you should have them you should build them and you should build the transit support for them, um, and so there was a call for uh, assistance on that and we have given uh, the local jurisdictions planning assistance in, in how to develop their P PDAs but we can stay, take it a, a step further with with implementation and actually um, showing how they can benefit uh, transportation in the future, and so. Um, in the longer run, so, so the, the, the things here really we can do in 2019 and 2020. But in the longer run, there are things here that, that we need to, to change, but I don't think we're going to do it on, until after the 2020 election and we've figured out what we're doing there. Um, and also the deadlines here are further out. So the, the countywide transportation plan does not need to be updated until 21-22. Um, and the bike pedestrian plan, we just adopted that in July 2018. So that's all these things have some running years on them. Um, and um, we'll be able to update them in the future. Uh, probably one that's, that's closer in than farther out is the PDA strategies and the new regional housing needs allocation, which is going to come. And that may have some surprises for us. And we may want to help the jurisdictions in in that discussion. Um, so that's that's basically uh, what happened here. You can see a well attended seminar uh, with lots of planners and transportation managers engaged in discussion. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, first of all, questions. Director um, I'm trying to look up SB 743. What year? It's not thing. coming up. I'm getting labor. I'm getting education. Do we know what year? This was, I've gone back to When it was adopted? Pardon me? 2017? 2013. 13? But it, but it, yeah, September 2013, according to Matt here. Uh, but the, the implementation is, it doesn't go into effect until July 1st, 2020. That's okay. I just want to read the. And it was a Steinberg. Okay, person. it's Steinberg. There we are. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 243? 742. Too darn many of them. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead, Janet. Um, I, uh, I was just wondering um, who, a little bit about who came to the seminar. Did you have a, like, approximately how many people came and were they uh, tra all transportation folks or were some of them from the planning departments of the city, you know, the people who deal with things like building housing? We, we had um, uh, pretty good representation from all of the cities. It, it varied. Um, it, it was as high as uh, as 18 out of 20, and I think it went as low as uh, as uh, I think there were only nine out of 20 at one of these. Um, and um, uh, we also had uh, some of the consultants that are working on this stuff. We're in there. We invited them specifically, and this was a joint meeting in that we invited all the transportation managers as well, um, and then we opened it up. This was a much larger invite than just the planning directors, and we opened it up for them to um, to uh, invite their staff if they were unable to make it. Um, but I do ha I do have a, a attendance summary if you'd like to see that. Um, well, yeah, I was just curious if it was. Um, Transportation or um, the in our the departments that at least in my city we call the planning department um, or uh, a combination. It was in, both. In so people uh, and, widely 
from you know across the county attended. That was what yeah. I was kind of curious yeah. about. Yeah, it was it was both. So so normally the the planning directors are kind of focused on planning, and then the transportation managers are focused more on on traffic and the growth management side. Believe it or not. And uh, and they come to our technical coordinating committee more than, more so than the planning directors. We do meet regularly with the planning directors, uh, quarterly basis. A smaller group of about 20 planning directors. So this was an expanded group. We actually invited I think about 60 people to each of these meetings, and usually got about 30 attendees. I think this was a great idea to do this because um, I I, um, I think it helps to expand. Um, the knowledge that's out there to a, a wider range of people uh, over time. I hope to see you uh, doing this again. Thank you. Okay. You're just asking us to receive the report sent it on to TCC. I would just add to this. Um, uh, I was thinking the same thing along the same lines as Karen, that if you do something that's as tied to legislation as this is, send the legislation with it to the TCC. I mean, they actually let them read something. It's probably, what, seven pages? Well, yeah. Well, not so much us, but when it goes to TCC, let them. It's just an added little attachment like everything else. And I actually end up reading this stuff and I go, well, it only passes if 14 others pass and it's in this line of succession or something like that. Um, the first seminar, you had, who was it, uh, Professor Daniel Sperling, um, your impressions, Martin, of that first seminar, I mean, was that we're off and running, this is excitement for all? Because I got to tell you, I went to a seminar with him, Steinberg, he's the one in Sacramento now, right? And and Steve Heminger, and I was out of there in 15 minutes. I mean, they're just, uh, they're in enough coffee to keep you awake for the, was it this, he spoke in Kobe, Japan after this, it's the same thing. I mean, are we getting anything new from these people, or should we be seeking? There was nothing about moss, nothing about mobility on demand. It's like stuff we were talking about when we thought about Measure X. Uh, I mean, I agree with Janet. If there's some new people like you're bringing into, this is when you remember to say something about Mobility Summit. But, uh, I mean, these are people that, they're cutting edge. They're talking. At Kobe Japan, there's 23 people from Amsterdam. This is what we're doing now. This is, it's ahead of this stuff. He's reading about his book. Now, granted, it goes back to April 2018. I don't expect you to remember that. But, I mean, the speakers are just as important. People with some, some passion or some think outside the box that excites you to do something. Uh, to me, I, that's where I agree with Janet. If you're feeding people an opportunity to think about some, and I'll give you one to think about. That is, we have one of 10 stations for testing the autonomous connected vehicle, and we don't want to see 11. And I really don't want to see the other nine, tell you the truth. All advancements, anything that we could feed, I almost have the thing out there if we could build you a little conference out there. But, I mean, we need people that are talking about that kind of stuff and get people excited. My two cents. Anybody else? Seeing none, we're, we're on to other business. Do we have any lights over there before we put Terry Ann in the spotlight to introduce her right-hand woman? You want me to do that? Are you you going to do that? I you wanted to maybe add a little you. bit to what you said, Please Mr. Do. Commissioner. I, I think that the speakers that Martin and, and we all chose were, mm -hmm. were perfect for the situation at the time. Yes. I know that Professor Sperling sometimes, you know, I've heard him speak in days of old where he didn't believe in the future of self-driving vehicles and things like that. I think that in writing his book, he's focusing on what I call ACES. It's a, autonomous, connected, shared, and electric. So he's really mm -hmm. kind of pushing that whole environment, and okay. I think we're, we're working on that as well here in Contra Costa County. Good. I think if you bring in a speaker that shocks the entire group, they tend then to shut down and not believe anything anybody else says, and I think there's a progression. And I think that the speakers that we have ch that we were we chose were right for those various topics to bring the county along, because we knew that we're not going to we don't drive the whole ship. You've got 19 cities in the mm -hmm. county, and so we're trying to bring everybody along at the even pace, so that in the future, as Martin said, it's very important that our plans reflect the future, not the past. Yes. And that's what we were trying to accomplish, and I think that ultimately we did that. 
I, I would concur. It's just the point I was trying to make when I heard him twice, I may have heard mobility on demand or MOS maybe once. Yeah, so that's a great point. So when yeah. we had the three women speakers from Europe, yes. that was one of the first time for sure in California that MOS and the whole we deployed MOS and you're still, you know, you're not even talking about MOS. So we're, we're fortunate in being in a few cases or some cases ahead of the rest of the people. I think that what we're working on is making sure that we bring everybody along at the same time. It's a progression. And we want to make sure the plans for the cities, the general plan, the transportation elements of your communities are up to date so that you're working on the right projects because those long-range plans develop the capital improvement programs that you're going to fund in the future when you modify San Pablo Dam Road. You've got a problem with Uber and Lyft now because they double park. And so you have, don't have capacity, through capacity. And when you have vehicles stopped in the middle of the road, you, it just in, exacerbates your congestion problem. So how do we fix that? And that's what we think that Dan's, Professor Dan Sperling brings is these things are coming. And it, it, at a different pace, everybody mm -hmm. believes maybe tomorrow, maybe in 10 years or five years or four years, but it's coming. Yep. Car companies and other technical com tech companies would not be investing billions of dollars in this technology. So mobility as a service, that's probably going to be the next whole next topic, mobility on demand, as you know from Vince, your friend Vince Valdez from the FTA. So we're going we're gonna to keep doing these succession or these plans, these seminars into the future. Good, good, good. So Terry Ann, you're up. Can we have a motion on item five? Oh, no, it's just for, we don't need a motion, just a, do we? Well, I'm sorry. It was I'll move to accept the report. The report Thank you. And forward I'm sorry, you're right. We have a motion, Mitch. Uh, now you're old news. Okay, what are you, you going to second? Second, <laughs> Loella Askew. All those in favor say aye, opposed. Uh, so send it to TCC, and, and uh, you can take from the little tidbits we added, which you will. Director Mitchoff, you have something? or? Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, go ahead, Terry. Hi, See what you have to do there, Jackie? Got to keep everybody in line. Yes, yeah, so this is Jackie Reyes. She's our new administrative assistant in planning. Uh, we're happy to have her here. We did steal her from the town of Danville. Oh, good. We haven't told Arnrich yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I'll go ahead and let her say a little something. Cool. Uh, before you do that, just to keep track with everybody, did somebody um, leave? Or we're at who left? Just so I can keep track of who's who. Wilma. Wilma left. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Jackie. <laughs> Happy to be here. My first meeting. Um, I came from the town of Danville, the Development Services Division. I was over there for a little over two years. And um, have a little bit of planning, building, transportation, and engineering background from over there as their admin assistant. So I'm happy to bring um, some more stuff this way and ready to join the team. Good, good, good. She we also like lives three miles that way down Treat. Yeah, I live down Treat, three miles, so it's uh, pretty close, too. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, you had your chance. All right, we adjourn to the next meeting, April 3rd at 6 p.m. That'd be a Wednesday right here. Thanks for coming.